Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Java series. I'm back again. I know it's been a little while, but uh, yeah, we're getting back into it. So anyway, um, what we left off with was uh, threads, multi-threaded programming, and we're going to pick up with that. Um, we're going to be picking up with uh, inter-thread communication, which is a really cool part of it. And it's kind of complicated. You just have to uh, take it slow and uh, do your best to understand it. Pause the video if you need to and all that kind of stuff. So... Anyway, so I'm going to do my pe uh, best to explain it, and then I'll be demonstrating it to the... Yeah, so... Um, so, um, in programming, you have basically just... Like we've already worked with, we have the regular multi-thread programming where you run two threads at the same time. But let's say that maybe we have one thread that produces something, right? Like a number or something like that. Okay, so it's producing something, and then the next thread is a consumer thread. So it has to use what the other thread produced, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so... Um, that could be a problem potentially because if you're running the producer and the consumer thing at the same time, it would it would break each other because basically you can't produce something and consume something at the same time. You have to you have to produce it, wait, and then consume it, and it can't be a consume then produce. You know, it has to be in order, so it has to switch between produce, consume, produce, consume like that. Okay, so that's just a classic programming example that people use when talking about interthread interthread communication. So. With this, what we're about to do here, enter thread communication, um, we can prevent it from doing um, two things at once, basically. Like, you can't produce and consume at the same time. That's what I was trying to explain a little bit. So, so I'll try to explain it one more time. So, for example, consider the classic queuing problem where run, one thread is producing some data and another is consuming it. To make the problem more interesting, suppose that the producer has to wait until the consumer is finished before it generates more data. So in a polling system, like the, the loop the system, the consumer would waste many CPU cycles while it waited for the producer to continue. Once the producer was finished, it would start polling, wasting more CPU cycles, waiting for the consumer to finish, and so on. So that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of words. And you don't really have to understand all of it. But let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. So with inter-thread communication, we have three main methods, okay? We have the wait method, the notify method, and the notify all methods, okay? So these methods are implemented into every object, so you can use them in any class that you want to use them in. Um, so yeah. So the wait method tells the calling thread to give up the monitor and go to sleep until some other thread enters the same monitor and blah, blah, blah. So that basically means that um, you cannot run the thread that calls wait until another thread tells it to with the notify. So the notify method will say to the, the thread that's waiting to start, okay? And then the notify all method tells all the methods that are waiting in that class to start. So <laughs> if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. I'll be explaining that too. And of course, I'll leave some resources in the description for you to check out. So anyway, I know that was a lot. I know maybe I'm horrible at explaining. I know I am, but anyway. So we're going to go ahead and start programming and uh, let's get started. So let's get rid of all this. So don't worry, I'll be giving you an example. So anyway, so what we're going to start doing here, I'm going to make an example program, right? And it's going to be the incorrect way of doing something. It's going to be using polling, which I talked about which is not good. So um, we're going to make a program, and then I'm going to show you, show you the solution for that program, which is inter-thread communication. So I'll, be, I'll basically be showing you how inter-thread communication make, could make your program better. Okay, so anyway. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make a class here, class Q. Okay. And inside class Q, we have a random integer, okay? And yeah, so this the whole point of this class Q is to be able to man manipulate this uh, and store this integer here. And you'll see soon. So we're going to make a method here, synchronize. It's going to be synchronized method, meaning it, it can run, all, the, only that method can run at once. Hopefully you watched last episode and the episode before that, so you understand what that means. Um, so yeah, it's going to be able, it's basically, we're, so we're basically going to be making a getter and a setter here. So this will be our getter. Um, it's not going to be called get queues or n, it's just going to be called get. So yeah, and then, um, so we're, it's just going to output the value of n. So value of n. Boom. And then it's just going to turn in because, of course, it's not void, so you have to return something. Okay, and likewise, we're going to make a setter, so we're going to be able to set the value of in with this method here. So, synchronized void put. We're just going to call it put instead of set, you know. Uh, in as a value. And then this dot in, which is going to be the one up here, these are going to be the same thing, is equal to the parameter that you put in here. So, these are the same thing, okay? Hopefully, you know that already. Pretty simple stuff. So setting 
the value of in, boom. So it's just going to return back what you reset it to, just in case you don't know, or whatever, just to confirm it, I guess. So yeah, so here's our class Q, okay, and it's just storing a variable, right? And with that, you could set it to be something, and then uh, or get it to set it to be something down here, and then get the value of it up here. It's a really simple class, right? Really stupid and really simple. Okay, so now we're going to make the producer um, class that I told you about. Okay, and the whole point of the producer class is just going to be able to um, produce the in value. So it's going to be using the put value, uh, the put method here, to set the value of in basically. So we're going to make a thread here. So class producer implements runnable. Okay. And of course, whenever you have, oh, we need these actually. So we're going to have a variable reference of Q here, the class Q. So we can, because um, remember, whenever you make a variable reference, then we can therefore access the methods that come inside of it. So put and get if you want to use it inside of here. But we're going to be using put, of course. Uh, okay, so so thread T. We're going to make this because obviously we're making a thread, right? And now we're going to have a producer, well, basically the constructor, right? And this is going to take a parameter of Q. Because it's going to ask you what, um, just yeah, you should know what that is for. We worked with that two episodes ago in the episode right before this one. And uh, yeah, so this dot Q equals Q. And uh, yeah, so T equals new thread. And this, and we'll give it a name, producer thread. Okay, so what this did here, um, and this did here, is basically it's setting the value of Q, this this one here equal to the one that you're putting in here, which will eventually be this one. Okay, we're just going to put the class into here, and then that lets us access it inside the run method. Which, if you remember correctly, the run method allows you to um, run the thread. Basically, any code inside the run method will be your thread's code. Okay, so we're going to run. Um, well, first we're going to do this int i equals zero. Okay, and then we'll do while true. So this basically is the pulling thing I told you about. So it's just check. Well, actually, not really. It's just going to be a thing that loops for infinity. So as long as you click start, it's good. This is just going to run the whole time because it's true infinitely. Okay. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So kit. Oh, q dot put. So now we can do q dot put right, which is the put method that we've made up up there. All right. So what this is basically doing is saying, uh, when you run this thread, basically take the value of i. Um, increment, increment, inc <laughs> increment it by one every time and put that value into the value of n, okay? So basically n is increasing by one every time, okay? And this is running infinitely, so every time, yeah, it's just going to be increasing it a lot. So uh, yeah, so yeah, that's all we have to do for the producer thread. So basically um, it's just making a thread that sets the value of n. That's all it's doing, okay? So now we're going to make another thread, which is our consumer thread. Consumer implements runnable. Okay, I'm, str I'm struggling to type QQ. We're going to do the same thing. Thread T. Oh my gosh. Okay, and then we're going to make a constructor here. QQ. And then um, T equals new thread. Uh, this consumer thread. And of course, we need to do this dot q is equal to q the parameter boom okay so that's that and then we can make our void public void run of course get rid of this because i don't want it here and then um so we're going to do the same thing actually no we don't need to do the same thing we're not setting the value right we're just getting the value so all we're going to do here is just do while true so this one will also run infinitely all true then just do q dot get so it's basically just going to output the value of n from here over and over and over, okay? So basically, this one's setting the value of n over and over, but this one's outputting the value of n over and over, okay? Really simple, okay? So now we made both the threads, so we can now access these, make the threads inside of here if you want to. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get started. We're gonna run it now. So q, q equals new q. So basically, we're just making an object of the class q, okay? And boom, so producer, P equals new producer, so we're just making a producer thread, right? And if you remember correctly, the producer thread is just going to be uh, setting the value of Q, or N, I mean, N, which is coming from the class of Q right up here. Okay, so it's asking right here for the parameter of Q because we're going to be, how can we, how else can we access the value of N if it's, 
if it doesn't have it inside of here. So boom, Q. So basically, uh, if you didn't get that, um, basically it's saying it's you can't set the value of n without accessing the the class of Q because n is inside of the class of Q. So that's why it's doing that. Hopefully that makes sense. So consumer C equals new consumer, and it's likewise going to do the same thing. How can we output the value of Q if we don't have access, or n how, if we don't have access to Q? You know. Uh, okay. So so um, if you're wondering why these both have Q. Um, since they both have Q as their parameter, it means that they will be accessing the same n variable as the Q class. So, what's to say that this P here isn't access, or this uh, producer thread isn't setting the value of n of another class Q? And what's to say this consumer isn't accessing the another another n of the different class Q? <laughs> I don't know. I'm having trouble talking, but hopefully that made sense. So it was basically just the same. It's ensuring that you can access the same value of n right up here. So. So basically, like if this one sets into two, this one will output into two, not like 40 from a different Q class. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Boom. So we're uh, starting the thread here, starting the producer thread, and then we're starting the consumer thread. Whew, I know that was a lot. So let's analyze it one more time before we start the program. Okay, so we have a class Q here, right? And this basically is holding a variable name in, okay? And then it has two methods. One method is just going to be able to output the value of in, and one method is going to be able to um, set the value of n, okay? Pretty simple, that's it. And now we have one thread here, it's called the class, uh, it's called thread pr producer, and then um, basically all it's doing is setting the value of n over and over and over and over because it's a, it's an infinite loop, right? That's why it's over and over and over. So if we didn't have the loop here, then it would just set the value of n one time, and that's it, okay? And this one is just uh, printing out with the get method the value of n over and over and over and over. So, yep, yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and then chaos happens. Okay, so let's analyze it. Let's stop it. Okay, so I know this was a lot. So it says setting the value of n over and over and over. But where's the producing? It's supposed to be producing, setting, producing, setting. That Likewise, you know, that would be the ideal situation. But we have a problem here because since it's multi-threading, things run at the same time, right? So it's producing and consuming at the same time. And sometimes, depending on your CPU and speed and all that crap, setting will um, overtake the producing. So it only set. So it's not going to be producing anymore. Or sometimes it's only going to be producing and not setting. Like it's just chaos, you know? So we need to set up a way for it to know to switch back and forth, you know? Produce, consume, produce, consume, produce, consume, you know? We need to implement a method for that. Um, some way we do that. And how do we do that? With inter-thread communication, okay? So this will allow us to switch back and forth from these two threads, okay? Okay, so I know that was a lot. So how do we do this, right? We actually don't even need to touch the, th the two threads here, but we need to uh, fix these methods here, okay? So we need to make it so these methods don't, they can't run at once, basically, okay? And you would think that synchronize would fix that for us, but not really because we're running two threads at once and just, yeah. Um, so it doesn't work for some reason, okay? So how do we fix this? Well, we're going to be able to use the wait method and the um, notify method to let them know when to, when to go. It's basically going to be taking turns back and forth. So first we need a Boolean value up here, okay? So Boolean wait equals false. So default it'll be false, okay? And then we're going to make a while loop here. So it's going to say a while, um, the opposite of wait, do this, okay? So that basically means while, and this is false. So while, um, so this will be true, you know, you know, because the exclamation point means that uh, it means the opposite, right? So this actually means true inside of here. Out here, it means false. But since the exclamation point is here, it means true. So this is going to run whatever is inside of here. So we're going to we're going to put a try statement here, and then you have to you have to, basically we have, why we have the try statement is to surround the wait because um, it's just to catch the exception of um, exception of wait, okay? Um, so yeah, so interrupted exception. So uh, yeah, so if we didn't have the try and catch here, I think it would produce an error. So that's why we have to have that. Okie dokie. So we're just going to output E, you know, the exception if it happens. And yeah. So again, let's look at this. So it's saying um, while wait is false, basically, then do this. Okay, so wait. So what wait does, if you don't remember, it tells the method you can't, it tells all the code inside the method you can't run. So yeah. So while this is run here, this cannot run until it gets a notify back. So the put method will notify it, and this will go, and then this will notify the put method, and it will switch back and forth, basically. So, yeah. So we're waiting now. 
And then it's going to be like, oh, okay, I'm waiting. So then we can run our code now because this notified it. We assume we have this notified it, right? So after that, we're going to notify, boom, and then we're going to set the wait equal to true. Okay. And then we're going to put a while statement here too, a loop here. So while true, then this one has to wait. Or no, while false, I believe, right? Yeah, while false. So this one's going to be false and this will be true up here. Or not true, I mean wait. So while wait is equal to true. Then run the code inside of here. So try wait. Boom. And remember, these two are different. This is a method. This is the Boolean that we made up there. So yeah. So we're going to catch that now. Okay, so there we go. We have a problem here. What's the problem? Uh, oh, right. Anyway, so I fixed that. So now it's waiting, right? Until the consumer notifies it. So this is now running. Boom, so notify. Oh no, we're gonna put it, we gotta put it after, right? So notify, and then wait is equal to true. Okay, I know that was a lot, so don't worry, I'll be explaining it in a second. We'll go back over it, but let's run it first and see if it works. Okay, so let's pause it so we can look at it, or stop it, I mean. So now, let's see, 60, 61, 61, 62. Okay, so it works in order now, so producer, consumer, producer, consumer. So now it's switching back and forth, right? So awesome, it works. So now it's not all running and crazy and all that kind of stuff. So I know I didn't explain it good, so let's go back over it again. So basically we have this two methods here, right? One is setting it, the value of in, and one's getting it or outputting it. So to prevent them from running at the same time and um, all that stuff, um, we have to make them wait. So remember, if what, what wait does is tells the method that you can't run until it's notified, okay? And likewise, this one has a wait method, so this one can't run until it's notified. So why do we have notify at the end here? Because notify will go up here, it's going to switch back and say git is now able to run because um, the wait is gone now because it was notified by the put. So it's basically, <laughs> it's a little confusing, but they're notifying each other back and forth over and over and over. And they're waiting over and over, but they're being notified and all that kind of stuff. So this one isn't notified until this one's done running. And this one's not notified until this one's done running. So, yeah. And this um, Boolean value is just telling it to... It's basically doing the same thing. It's just telling it to wait and all that kind of stuff. So I know I didn't explain it good probably, but just pause the video. Um, take a look at it um, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll help you. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you need to see more, subscribe. Um, yeah, and peace.